the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The next best time is right now. The same rules apply to financial success. Saving money is the first step towards financial independence. And at the Bank of Lafayette, we have an investment account for every situation. How much you save is not nearly as important as establishing a regular pattern of saving and placing of your money aside in a safe and secure place. Whimsical thinking and immediate gratification can rob you of a financially secure future and a safe and comfortable retirement. At the Bank of Lafayette, we can help you choose an investment account that will help you reach your immediate, short-term, and long-term goals. The one rule that always applies across every economic timeline and condition, the sooner you begin saving, the faster your money will grow. Bank with confidence at the Bank of Lafayette, your hometown bank for more than 110 years. Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. The legacy of the Gilbert family is deep-rooted in North Georgia. Dating back to 1879 and the birth of the family patriarch, Cicero Columbus Gilbert, better known as CC. In 1914, Walker County Bank opened for business on the square in Lafayette with CC Gilbert as the bank's cashier. In 1932, Walker County Bank merged with the Bank of Lafayette, retaining the name Bank of Lafayette, where he served as Executive Vice President. He was elected President in 1939 and held that position until his death in 1953. CC and his wife Ellen had two sons. CC's oldest son, Bob Davison Gilbert Sr., graduated from Lafayette High School and the University of Georgia. He served in the Army Air Corps, 317th Fighter Squadron in the North African, Italian, and European campaigns in World War II. He served as President of the Bank of Lafayette from 1953 through 1967 and Chairman CEO until 1984. Bob and his wife Ethel had four children, Ethel Ware, Dave, Ellen, and Wade. Charles Martin Gilbert graduated from Lafayette High School, but his college years were interrupted by World War II and his training in the Army Air Corps. World War II ended before his training was complete, so he hitchhiked home from Amarillo, Texas. Returning home, he graduated from the University of Georgia. Charlie spent 60 years at the bank and at the time of his death served as chairman of the board. Charlie and his wife Lorraine had three children, Henry, Anne, and George. Cece's wife, fondly referred to as Miss Ellen, operated the style shop clothing store on the square in Lafayette. During the war years, while her sons were serving our country, she and the local ladies would gather in the back of the store and roll bandages for the Red Cross. Bob Davison Gilbert Jr., we know him as Dave, currently serves as chairman of the board and CEO. He graduated from Clemson in 1970 with a first lieutenant ROTC commission, where he served in the U.S. Army during the Vietnam conflict. He moved home in 1976 to work with his father and uncle, becoming the third generation of Gilberts at the Bank of Lafayette. He and Jane Ellen have been married for 40 years and are the proud parents of two daughters, Janie and Leslie, and five grandsons, Louis, Davis, Hayes, Gilbert, and Crawford. Henry currently serves as president of the Bank of Lafayette. He graduated from Sanford University and while there, met Belva Glover on a blind date. They married in 1976. Henry, Belva, and daughter Sarah returned to Lafayette in 1982. Henry started at the bank as an auditor and Belva started teaching at North Lafayette Elementary. Sarah and her husband Bernie and grandchildren Grace and Charlie live in Brentwood, Tennessee. But the family lineage doesn't stop with Dave and Henry. Wade is Vice President and Chief Appraiser. George is Vice President and IT Officer. And Jane Ellen serves as PR Director. Janie Grinnell and Julie Carter both serve as loan officers and represent the fourth generation of Gilberts at the bank. The family's civic involvement and bank's charitable giving is also legendary and has touched tens of thousands of lives over the years. The list of civic, school, community, 
and charitable donations as well over 100 organizations. The Boy Scouts, YMCA, Lafayette Housing Authority, Georgia Northwestern Foundation, 4-H, Walker County Schools, Lafayette Downtown Development Authority, Lafayette Library, Walker County Chamber, Family Crisis Center, Relay for Life, and many more too numerous to name. Helping families, students, our veterans, the young, the elderly, the sick, and the disadvantaged. Volunteering time and resources to improve infrastructure, strengthen families, and our faith. There's no mistaking the love of community by the Gilbert family and the Bank of Lafayette, a family legacy and tradition that dates back over 100 years. The Gilbert family's legacy travels outside of Lafayette and Walker County, heading north on Highway 27 to the city of Fort Oglethorpe, where donated land has given the city Gilbert Stevenson Municipal Park, with a playground, world-class swimming pool, tennis courts and walking tracks. The land for the city's welcome sign was also donated by the family. The Gilbert family and Bank of Lafayette, Walker County Distinguished Service Award honorees for 2017. Mary Ellis Carpenter is originally from Columbia, Tennessee. She and her husband, Ed, and daughters, Amy and Carrie, moved to Ringgold in 1993, where Mary joined Northwest Georgia Bank as a new account representative. In 1996, Mary moved to the new bank in town, Gateway Bank and Trust, as one of its founding employees and began marketing the bank in 1999. In 2012, First Volunteer Bank acquired Gateway, where she transferred to the Chattanooga office and holds the title of Vice President, Marketing and Culture. Our communities have benefited greatly from Mary's dedication to children and making North Georgia a better place to live and raise a family. Mary has worked tirelessly on behalf of communities and schools, Special Olympics and Junior Achievement. She served as chairwoman of the Catoosa County Chamber and North Georgia United Way campaign. Mary was a dancing star to raise research money for the Alzheimer's Association. She received the Catoosa Chamber Chairman's Award, was named Catoosa Citizen of the Year, and with husband Ed, was inducted into the United Way Leadership Hall of Fame. The newest fundraising event that Mary helped organize is the Sundress Ball. Mary and her husband, Ed, have been married for 35 years. She'll retire this year, and she and Ed are building a home and moving to Florida so they can be closer to Amy, Britt, and seven-year-old granddaughter, Reese. Some of my mom's most endearing qualities are she is always involved with something, and I really love that about her because me and when I was younger, my sister and I would come home and it would be, she was always into something. It was like, oh, I got this this weekend, or oh, we gotta do this. And something that I remember growing up for the last, I think it's going on 18 or 19 years now, was the Communities in School run that she did. Um, and every morning on, on that Saturday of the run, she would wake up at 4 a.m. and go get all the signs ready and put everything out in the community, and her and my dad both. And um, I just always remember that. And there was one time specifically, it was prom weekend. And I was so nervous that she was gonna be too tired to help get me ready for prom and take me to all my appointments. But she did it, of course, because that's my mom and that's what she does. <laughs> well, what makes Mary so special is it's hard to find people in our community that will devote their lives to a cause. And Mary has devoted so much of her, her life and her time and resources to bettering the children here in Catoosa County. Um, Mary has been part of Communities and Schools Board of Directors and in fact she was part of the, the original group of individuals in the community that started Communities and Schools. And so it's just been a privilege to see that for 19 years she has been 
pulling a, a 5K run for us together in Ringgold with all the proceeds coming to communities and schools. And I figured up the other day, I was in there thinking, you know what, I wonder how much Mary has really contributed. And Mary, over the 19 years, Mary has raised over $200,000 to help kids here in Catoosa County. And it's just really, it's just touching to me that somebody, and it's a, she's a mentor to me because you just don't find people every day that would do that, um, to give up their time and their resources to help other people. One of the largest events that uh, an event that has become large that Mary actually started with First Volunteer is called Tailgate Palooza. And Tailgate Palooza takes place in the fall. It's a customer event. And at the same time, it's an event that she decided we needed to use to raise donations of food for the kitchens that are in all of our markets. We have markets all over Tennessee and in North Georgia. And through the four years that we've had this event, Mary's leadership has brought in almost 175,000 meals into those food pantries across our footprint. And that's just one example of the way that she leads people to become involved, to become part of the action, and she actually is a leader who pulls people into action. She doesn't do it all herself. Mary is the person who sees what needs to be done, and then she has the ability to say, you really ought to be part of this. You should try this, make this part of what you do, and it's driven a lot of our success with the things that we do in our communities. Mary, I first met Mary back in 2011, late 2011, when First Volunteer was um, purchasing Gateway Bank and Trust. And so over the last five years, her impact to the company has been tremendous. She just has the knack of pulling people together. We have 300 employees. And uh, she gets our purpose, a bank's purpose in the community. And she helped us unite these people around that common purpose of giving back to the community and providing banking services to the community. She just absolutely gets it. So when any employee today has when we're rolling out a new initiative, we're trying to do something that, that we really think is important and they don't understand or they don't get it. She spends her time, she spends her energy, she just walks the talk and lives lives the company and she helps them. She helps them understand and uh, uh, spends a lot of time making sure that everybody's on board with what we're doing and if not, why. She, she's just a wonderful asset uh, for everything we do. So I like to travel a lot and I wanted to take my parents along with me on some of my travels and adventures and we went to Rome. And uh, it was the very first time abroad, my mom's first time in Europe. And we went to Rome and we went to the Vatican City, um, which is where the Pope lives. And um, it was during uh, the Pentecost or some sort of holy event, I'm, I'm actually not sure which one it was. And um, the Pope was going to be uh, coming out and sort of standing and, and doing what the Pope does. And my mom <laughs> looks at my dad and I and she's like, is, is that the real Pope? Like, is that, is that it? Is that the real Pope? And it was just so funny because it was like, it was just her, didn't re she didn't realize that yes, the Pope was here and he lives in Italy and yes, he's about to speak in front of everyone. So <laughs> I'll never forget that. <laughs> so. We implemented the Duck Derby. Uh, this is our third year doing that with communities and schools. And we decided as part of the evening at our annual dinner in the fall to kick off our Duck Derby for the spring, we decided to auction off duck number one. And let me tell you, not many people can raise $500 for a rubber duck. But Mary did that that night for us at communities and schools. So I just, you know, it's she can do anything she sets her mind to. and. It was so fun to watch her, you know, patting people on the back to get them to raise the, the amount for the duck. So we raised $500 for a rubber duck for our, den, for our uh, spring fundraiser. You know, one of the things about Mary that I've seen just recently, personally, um, Mary is someone who I would say is a confident risk taker. She's not someone who does crazy things necessarily or certainly not, not reckless things, but she recently um, found out through Ancestry.com that she has a brother. 
a brother that she never knew she had. And it has been so fun to watch her, who grew up as an only child, uh, realize that she has a brother and build a relationship with him and his family. And so there's been a lot of laughter that's taken place over what could have been and at the same time the things that happened in his life and in her life when they were living essentially separately together as brother and sister. Oh, a couple of things. Uh, first thing is Mary hates spicy food. So whenever we're going for pizza or whatever, we always have to remember that if we order something like that, she won't eat it. She's a hoot around the spicy foods. She absolutely runs from it. And the other thing that uh, most people would never dream about Mary being from North Georgia and loving and giving back to the community like she does, is she is an avid Tennessee Volunteers fan. So when we have our uh, tailgate days and stuff, everybody is really, really shocked when Mary Carpenter comes in in her orange and white. So it's always funny. <laughs> I think my mom passed along to my sister and I to always do our best, um, to never give up and to keep trying. Um, my mom really is an inspiration and I'm going to start crying and actually <laughs> if she's not already crying watching this, she's going to, she's going to now, um, but she is the most inspiring woman that I've ever met and every day um, she inspires me to do better and to do more and I remember there was something I wanted to do. I would always come to her with these ideas of, yeah, I wanna, um, I wanna go to Europe or I wanna do this. And finally, after years and years of me doing this, she just looked at me and said, you know what, Carrie, do it. If anybody can do it, I know you can. And so her support uh, to my sister and my family means the most, is, means the most to, to us. Mary has inspired me to want to be that individual in the community that gives back to other people and she just has such a heart for kids and it's just really touching to me that whenever you know she hears of a need of a child or anything at Christmas time and you know if you don't know Mary she's a crier and so when she really hears a story about a child or a family that doesn't have she she is so emotional about that and I just see how much that that means to her and she inspires me to want to be a better person and to be that person that is helping ever you know helping individuals in the community one real inspiring moment uh, for the whole company um, that Mary led the charge was back in uh, 2014 we have an annual meeting every year where we bring in all 300 employees and we work really hard to roll out our plan for the year and it'd been tough a few years uh, through the re recession and recovery and Mary had this idea of let's do a video and let's pick a song that's that's fun and really tells what we're trying to do and let's get everybody to have a part and every branch can do their own part we have 24 branches and every every branch gets their own five seconds of fame and so we did and we picked the Katy Perry song roar which says that we're gonna roar into 2014 and Mary on a snowy January and 17 degree weather was on the Cumberland Plateau. She was up above Knoxville. She was literally traveling around videoing our people. And then beyond that, she came back and put it all together when we, uh, and made a gorgeous video. When we brought everybody together uh, and showed them that video, it was probably one of the most moving moments in the company. And we played that video all year long and everybody really understood where we were headed and it was all her idea. Uh, and it was easy and simple, uh, and, and she just led the whole company with it. Mary, as we think about you making this transition and taking this next step in your life to retire to Florida, um, the thing that keeps coming back to my mind is, wow, that community is gaining someone who is going to make an impact there I don't know if you'll do it through fundraising, I don't know if you'll do it through regular volunteer work, but I know that that part of Florida will never be the same because of the ability that you have to move people to action and make a difference in the community that you're part of. Mom, I love you. I know that you're crying right now, but it's okay because that's what you do. <laughs> and I want you to know that I'm so proud of you. and. Me, Amy, and Dad, and Reese, and Britt are all extremely proud of everything that you do and everything that you provide for our family. I love you. <laughs> Mary Carpenter, 
Catoosa County Distinguished Service Award honoree for 2017.